Senator Sengem. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I have the, uh, the A50 amendment to House File 44. Senator Senjum offers the A50 amendment. The Secretary will report the amendment. Senator Senjum moves to amend House File Number 4425 as follows. Delete everything. This is the A50 amendment. To the amendment, Senator Senjum. Thank you, uh, Madam President. Members, uh, this is the, uh, it's obvious what it is. It's the capital investment bill. It's a public infrastructure bill for 2018. We come back tonight uh, and uh, with uh, a, uh, a slightly more advanced bill than we had the last Wednesday. It's a uh, bill that uh, has additional projects in it uh, by virtue of the fact that uh, we set aside some money into the LCCR MR fund and included, and are going to include that, by the way, in the bonding bill ultimately. Uh, but uh, by so doing, we're able to bring into the bill $98 million of ad additional money. And uh, so we, we still have members an $825 million GO bond, and uh, from the standpoint of all funds, it's a $1.4 billion fund. So I would suggest uh, that's pretty healthy, but yet it does meet uh, certainly a lot of infrastructure needs across Minnesota. I'm not going to over-talk this bill, Madam President, but I would just say that this is a, this is a jobs bill. This is a bill that uh, provides many, many jobs for people across Minnesota. As we think about uh, the need for jobs, and particularly in, in the trades, uh, this bill is going to put a lot of people to work, no question about it. So think about that as you vote for it, but also think about it from the standpoint of its virtues, uh, from the standpoint of what it does. It does a lot of things. I'll just maybe point out, without getting into the depths of the bill, certainly traditionally structured in terms of taking care of things like education, taking care of things like the environment, transportation, and so on and so forth. But there are some things in here which are somewhat new and different from the standpoint of other bills. I mentioned them last week. Uh, from the standpoint of mental illness, uh, we've got about uh, now $51 million in the bill to cover issues related to mental illness. From the standpoint of crisis centers and supportive housing, as that's needed. We've got uh, food shelf uh, matters in here. Second harvest is in here. We've got a, a uh, a food shelf in Crookston, which is funded, and if you've ever been there, you can, I, I will just tell you, because mostly we haven't, it's badly needed, and they serve a tremendous, uh, a tremendous uh, area of service up there. As uh, we think about this bill, though, uh, Madam President, and again, it's, it's typically tip, uh, traditional, but I will add uh, that uh, we have added at least uh, $125 million new dollars to this bill by virtue of, uh, again, the LCCMR component and, and some additional money, cash money for safe schools. Uh, as you look at it, and I hope you all have the sheets uh, in front of you, as you look at it, I think you'll find it's a robust bill. If I didn't say it, there are 197 items in here that are funded at some particular level. Um, perhaps a, a notable one to also mention is what we call quarters of commerce. We did not have that previously. Within this bill, there's $400 million devoted for quarters of commerce, which is going to do many good things, uh, specifically as we look at routes like Highway 14, as we look at routes like Highway 29, as we look at routes like 252 and so on across Minnesota and, and others. Uh, this is going to help immensely in terms of advancing some of those particular corridors. Uh, as uh, as we envelop, and I will just tell you procedurally, I'm waiting for some amendments which were put together before this uh, presentation tonight. I'm not sure they're available yet, but we want to uh, move the, uh, the uh, what we call the Bach amendments at this point, the minority amendments, and bring those forward, except I don't have them at this point, nor do I have the uh, LCCMR amendments. So at this point, maybe I'll just stand for questions. Uh, you Senator do have, Sanchez. I guess, at this point now, with respect to LCCMR, the list of projects, and most particularly if you turn to the back uh, on Article 4, those are the projects which, are, which were jettisoned, if you will, from the, from the base bonding bill, put into LCCMR, still funded. I think particularly as you look at that, it's uh, met the uh, Metro Parks, I know are of great interest to many of you. 
We've got uh, natural resource asset preservation from the standpoint of DNR. We've got some lakes here that are in need of uh, dredging, and we've got, uh, very importantly, a hazardous waste landfill site in Anoka County that does need to get uh, taken care of. We put money in this previously. If we take care of this particular item here tonight, that will be fully taken care of, and uh, it will be able to move away from that and be assured that uh, certainly the waters in that particular area of our, of our state are going to be protected and preserved. Senator Sengem, if you are okay. waiting for other amendments, Madam, I have. Uh, Madam I do Chair, have, is, do we have the. Uh, Senator Sengem, I've got Do we have any additional one. amendments at the desk at this point? Senator Sengem, yes, I was going to call in Senator Kiffmeyer. She does have an amendment we could offer right now. Okay. I'm ready. Senator Kiffmeyer. Thank you, Madam President. I offer the A51 amendment to House File 4425. Senator Kiffmeyer offers the A51 amendment. The Secretary will report the amendment. Thank you. Senator Kiffmeyer moves to amend the Senjum amendment to House File number 4425 as follows, page 155. Insert. This is the A51 amendment to the amendment. To the amendment, Senator Kiffmeyer. Thank you, Madam President and members. This is um, an article regarding the Legislative Budget Office. And members, this has already been signed into law, the Legislative Budget Office. But this is language that has been worked on in regards to the timing, delaying the effective date to Jan September 1st of 2019, and making some other technical changes that will make a smoother transition. With that, members, I ask for a yes vote on the A51 amendment to House File 4425. Discussion to the amendment. Seeing none, Senator Pappas. Thank you, um, Madam President. Um, will uh, Senator Sanjum yield? Senator Sengem will yield. Senator Sengem. Senator, Senator Sengem, this looks highly unorthodox to be offering this at 1110, the last night of session, to a agreed upon negotiated bonding bill. Could you please comment on it? Senator Sengem, I believe to the A51, if they gave you a copy of that. Uh, Madam, uh, Madam President, with Senator Pappas, I, I had about three things going through my mind as she spoke. Would you just uh, restate that question real quickly? Senator Pappas. Senator Sengem, this uh, amendment, I haven't seen this before, and I think it's very strange to be offering this kind of an amendment. It doesn't have much to do with a bonding bill, and uh, it hasn't been discussed, and I'm just, this is the first time I've been aware of it, so I was wondering if you would comment on why we have this amendment before us. Senator uh, Sengem. Madam President and uh, Senator Pappas, I'm going to refer that back to Senator Kiffmeyer uh, for comments. Senator Kiffmeyer. Thank you, Madam President and Senator Pappas. Members, this is not new. The Legislative Budget Office was signed into law last year. This is language, the Legislative Budget Office, that passed off the Senate floor as part of the state government uh, portion of the Supplemental Budget Bill. And so it is before us here today, as been heard, properly gone through the committees as required, and I believe it's all in order, and Ms. Senator Senjum has accepted it. Thank you, Madam President. Madam President. Madam President, Senator I challenge Marty. the germaneness of this amendment, uh, A51 amendment, I challenge the germaneness, a totally different subject, totally different purpose. Further advice on germaneness? Madam President, um, I just wanted Senator to announce Pappas. that I withdraw my objections to the amendment. Senator Sengem, advice? Uh, no, Madam President, uh, I would like to move on, if that's proper. We're, we're on a germaneness uh, challenge from Senator Marty. No, I have no on comments. On the A51 amendment. It's not true. I know. Senator Marty's 
Point of order is not well taken. Senator, we, um, so we have the A51 in front of us. Any further discussion to the A51? Seeing none, Senator Kiffmeyer renews her motion to adopt the A51 amendment. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. The amendment is adopted. Senator Sencham. Uh, Madam President, I have the A53 amendment. Senator Sengem offers the A53 amendment. The Secretary will report the amendment. Senator Sengem moves to amend the Sengem amendment to House File 4425 as follows. Page 100. This is the A53 amendment. To the amendment, Senator Sengem. Uh, thank you, Madam President. And uh, the A53 amendment is uh, all about, if you will, the, uh, the, uh, the deal from the standpoint of putting this bill together tonight and uh, making it work. Uh, within that amendment, we're talking about DNR uh, reforestation. We're talking about a trail health development in Ely, Minnesota. We're talking about uh, non-earmarked portions of a local road improvement program for use uh, for local road improvement programs in Anoka County. Uh, a deed uh, uh, project, the city of Duluth happens to be the zoo, and the city of Rice Lake uh, water main replacement. Uh, that was the, the components of at least uh, what we talked about in terms of putting this thing together tonight and making it work. In addition to that, is it is the LCCMR amendment. Uh, Senator Westrom, you want to speak briefly to that? Just a couple of brief comments, if you will, Senator, about the LCCMR program. S uh, Senator Sengem? Madam President, yes. Madam President, you're, you're, uh, members. You're calling on people from the floor, and generally you let me do that. Um, Senator Westrom, did you want to talk on this? I mean, we're pressed for Madam time. Madam President, uh, hearing the body's wishes of uh, no and speed, I will sit down. Thank you. <laughs> Senator Bach, did you have comments to this amendment? Well, uh, uh, yeah, Madam President, I do actually. I, I want to thank Senator Sendrum for taking the uh, tax credit language that is going to make a major housing development down at Fort Snelling happen. Uh, doesn't cost anything in the bill. It wasn't in the earlier bills, House or Senate but it's going to make a very, very large construction project that's going to build affordable housing for the metropolitan area. Uh, we're just making some federal tax credits, making this project eligible for them. And sometimes little things that don't cost money are very, very important, and this is going to lead to a, a massive construction project and, and a large group of affordable housing. So, Senator, Senator Sundrum, thank you for taking it. Madam President. Senator Sengem. Madam President, I have no more comments on the A53 amendment unless anyone else does. Senator Eaton. Thank you, Madam President. Well, I strongly object to using the lottery funds or the Environment and Natural Resources Trust Fund as appropriation bond um, debt service. This will um, essentially destroy this fund down the road. It violates the faith of the voters. The proceeds from the proposed um, bond authorization would be targeted on the exact purposes that are expressly excluded from eligibility in the, um, in the uh, Constitution. The Minnesota voters overwhelmingly approved the current uh, dedication of the state lottery proceeds 20 years ago. Um, it was a clear understanding that none of these funds would be used for municipal water pollution control under the authority and that they would not be used to um, substitute for traditional sources of funding. There is plenty more room in the bonding and we, can, we don't need to start um, destroying um, this fund. The, Besides the increased risk and the um, cost of the appropriation bonds, which are much more expensive, the, um, the fiscal gimmicks like this put the credit rating at risk, uh, such as when we borrowed from the tobacco settlement, they allowed the state to avoid a $640 million in spending cuts or tax increases. This was cited as one of the reasons the state bond rating was downsized. The impacts of the state bonding every year going forward um, will be, well, will compound. This is a risk taken only for political purposes, not need. 
Issuing all these bonds as geo bonds makes fiscal sense and protects the faith of the voters and goodwill of the lottery purchasers. I strongly oppose this um, LCCMR um, raid and um, urge members to vote against it. Further discussion on the A53? Senator Senjum renews his motion on the adoption of the A53 amendment. All in favor say aye. Those opposed? No? The amendment is adopted. Further discussion on House File 4425, Senator Sengem? Uh Madam President, uh, just to conclude uh, from Actually, the standpoint Senator of my Sengem, comments, I pardon? thought you had one more amendment. I do have a couple of people who wanted to speak on the bill. I'm sorry. Account. Senator Simonson? Thank you, Madam President and members, and I'll be brief. Uh, Senator Sengem, I want to just say uh, thank you for the projects that are in the bill. Uh, I know putting together one of these bills is incredibly challenging, and uh, you uh, ha obviously have a lot of good projects in here for, for a number of communities across the state. But I would be remiss if I didn't stand up and express my extreme disappointment in the fact that uh, a project that was very important to my community, to the city of Duluth, and to really all of northern Minnesota, for some unknown reason, did not make it into the final version of this bill. Members, when we put together a capital investment bill, it really should be nonpartisan. And what I'm seeing here really is uh, a partisan attack uh, on my city, and I take that personally, but I don't blame anybody specifically. Um, we brought forward a proposal, members. We got two hospitals in Duluth. And between the two of them, we probably got about 8,500 employees just in the downtown area alone. We've got one hospital system, Essentia Health, wants to invest $800 million into a new hospital in Duluth. St. Luke's, probably another $200 million. We brought together, a, put together a proposal brought to the legislature this year that requested $164 million in state dollars to build out public infrastructure to support this massive economic development effort in the city of Duluth. Thousands of construction jobs, good economic development for the city of Duluth and for northern Minnesota, and there is absolutely no reason why that project didn't make it into this bill. It had zero cost in this biennium. It would not have affected the target. It was about $5 million, maybe $6 million in the out biennium. And the only reason that I can see that that bill is not in here, well, frankly, I just, I just can't find a reason. I am just extremely frustrated and disappointed, and I wish that we will get to a point someday in the Minnesota Senate where politics doesn't come into play when we put together a bill like this. Senator Friends. Thank you, Madam President. I want to thank Senator Senjem for bringing this bill forward. Where I live in North Mankato, you can both see and hear Highway 14. And in southern Minnesota, the loudest sound that this bill is making is the $400 million in corridors of commerce, which will allow us to complete a crucial stretch of Highway 14. That connects the heart of southern Minnesota for the people, the families, the businesses, everyone that lives there, and everyone that's coming through. And I'd just like to add for every member in here, this is the very point of corridors of commerce, to connect regional centers. And this bill does that, and for decades now, the group that calls itself the Highway 14 Partnership has been working to make progress on this road, and this bill is a major step forward. I want to thank every member in this chamber. Senator Dibble. Thank you, Madam President. Madam President, as I was scrolling through the bill and the spreadsheets, I couldn't help but notice um, that uh, what we had seen earlier, $350 million for roads and bridges, um, most of them earmarked for specific projects, has now grown to 43.9, almost 540, I'm sorry, $544 million. So I thought, uh, well, that's great uh, for the reasons that Senator French just cite, Friends just cited. Um, that means uh, transportation is recognized as an important uh, aspect of infrastructure and economic opportunity and uh, the opportunity for people to do things uh, that they need to do with their lives and communities to thrive. Um, I'm excited to see what uh, we're going to do for the metropolitan area and transit. And I look over at the uh, Metropolitan Council, and what do I see for uh, busways, transit, zero dollars. Not one penny 
not one thin cent. Madam President, members, what this bill says is we just don't care. We don't care about a lot of people in this state. We don't care about a large part of this state. If you're a student and you need to get to school, we don't care. You don't belong here, you're not welcome. Your life and your dreams and your aspirations don't matter. If you're a senior citizen and you want to stay in your home, want to be connected to your neighbors, your church, can't drive anymore, we don't care. Your lives, your hopes, your dreams, your aspirations, they don't matter. You're not in this bill. We're not going to provide for you what you need. If you're disabled, you want to be part of the community, you want to go to work, you want to go to church, you want to get to your life, you want to see your friends, we don't care. We don't care about you. You don't matter. You don't show up in this bill. Members, 80% of those who use transit are going to work or to school. Our metropolitan area is going to grow by 750,000 to a million people over the next few years. One in five people will be 65 years or older. Currently, it's only one in nine people. Millennials are looking for places to live with the kind of transportation options, the kind of urban amenities that we find in other places. We are losing millennials. Our business community is telling us we need to start gaining millennials to fill the kinds of jobs that are going unfilled in this state. We are going to need 47 new bus lines. 76 of the lines we have need to be expanded. We'll need 20 new rapid bus transit ways, including 17 bus rapid transit lines. The governor proposed $50 million for bus rapid transit. I need to say this. I'm being asked to not speak up for transit and to cut off my speech, so I will cut it short. But very quickly, the governor proposed $50 million in this bill. Zero showed up. This is a disgrace. Senator Cohen. Th thank you, Madam President. Very quickly, $25 million in this bill for safe schools coming from the budget reserve. The budget reserve members, as I've said time and time again, is not meant to be a slush fund when we can't find the money properly for the appropriations we want. Senator Sanchum. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you for all the comments that I've heard tonight. Uh, we're simply going to move on. I would uh, suggest a strong vote for House File 4425 as amended. It's all about, uh, if you will, infrastructure, 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 jobs, jobs, jobs. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. Madam, Madam President. President. Senator Zalka. I think we're working on one amendment. There was a, a misunderstanding on one of the agreed upon pieces, and we need to take one little piece out. I understand that. Uh. Senator Sanjum. Uh, Madam President, I move that uh, the uh, I move that the vote uh, whereby the adoption of the A53 amendment uh, to House File 4425 was adopted May 21st, uh, uh, 2018, now be reconsidered. On that motion, all in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The motion is adopted. We now have in front of us the A53 amendment. Madam President, uh, 
Is the A353 now amendment before the body? Yes, so you should okay. withdraw the amendment. Madam President, I would withdraw the amendment. A53 has been withdrawn. And Senator Sengem, could you offer the A54 amendment? Senator Sengem moves to amend the Sengem amendment to House File 4425 as follows, page 100. This is the A54 amendment. Senator Sengem, do you have any comments on that? I have no, uh, no comments before the A54 amendment, Madam Chair, Madam and, President. And just as an explanation, I believe Senator Gazelka said this was a correction because there was something uh, incorrect on the A53. So. On Senator Sengem, motion to adopt the A54 amendment. All in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The A54 is adopted. And, and Senator Sengem, you gave your closing comments. Uh, I think uh, to some extent I already have infrastructure, 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 jobs, jobs, jobs. <laughs> That's all we Senator need. But Madam President, yeah. Madam President, Stephanie James, Casey Mum, Susie Giroux, Beth Kleinbull, David Fraser, Craig Janicech, and thank you, Senator Pappas, for the opportunity to work with you this year. Thank you. Senator Sengem renews his motion on the A50 amendment. All in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The amendment is adopted. The Secretary will give House File 4425 its third reading. House File Number 4425, a bill for an act relating to capital investment. Secretary will take the roll on House File 4425. All senators having voted, the secretary will close the roll. There being 42 ayes and 25 nays, the bill has reached the threshold and it is passed in its title agreed to.